Let's cross over to uh, our Dana Lewis, who is a senior Russia correspondent. He joins us now from London. Uh, Dana, good to have you on the show. Okay, so I understand this is the first time that the Biden administration is slapping uh, Moscow with some sanctions, but um, aren't they largely symbolic? Well, I don't think they're symbolic in the extent that they are targeting certain companies and certain individuals, and you can break it into two parts. You can talk about the poisoning uh, of Navalny, and then you can talk about the jailing of Navalny. And I think that what you're seeing, first of all, is they very clearly come out and say that the FSB uh, was to a high degree of certainty behind this, and that follows all of the independent investigations that you know, showed FSB agents were, were tailing him, uh, using cell phone data, uh, probably tracking him for a two-year period. The, the FSB, which is the successor to the KGB, uh, has really been outed on this. But the sanctions go after, one, the production of Novichok, this nerve agent uh, that was used in Salisbury, and then probably a, an updated version of it, uh, used on Navalny by all accounts, by different European countries that have examined it. So they will target uh, some of the, the companies that were involved in the production uh, of chemical weapons. And don't forget that Russia is a signatory to the CWC, the, the, uh, the, the Chemical Weapons Convention. Uh, and then the, some of the individuals, and I think that's where your uh, suggestion that they're largely symbolic is, is probably going to be borne out, and there'll be some disappointed uh, disappointment with who has been targeted, because mainly you're hearing about uh, Igor Krasnov, who became Russia's prosecutor general a year ago, uh, Alexander Bastrukin, an investigative committee who handles investigations into major crimes. Uh, and reports to, to President Vladimir Putin, Viktor Zolotov, the head of Russia's National Guard, uh, and a former Putin bodyguard, and, and who threatened Navalny in September 2018. And then uh, the, the fourth one that uh, the EU and the, the U.S. Uh, have named is Alexander Kalishnikov, head of the Federal Prison Service. So those guys being targeted because they were involved in the jailing of Navalny, and then you have the companies that were involved in the production uh, of Novichok. Uh, Dana, so you said that we should analyze this in, in, under two perspectives, the jailing of Alexei Navalny and the poisoning of Alexei Navalny. I think that's a good analysis. But um, when you look at the U.S.'s response, and it is expected that it's going to be uh, the EU's response is going to largely mirror the U.S.'s. But um, how do you think this, uh, what effect do you think this will or may not have on the quote-unquote uh, political fate of Alexei Navalny? Probably none. Uh, probably none, and that will disappoint a lot of people. And I think that you look at your first question uh, in many ways, you know, cut the cheese here in, in the sense that already Bill Browder, who has been uh, pushing uh, the Magnitsky sanctions, has said these sanctions don't go far enough. You know, the, in order to get Putin to change behavior, in order to get Russia to stop poisoning opposition figures uh, using chemical, biological uh, designed weapons. Uh, in silencing opposition, both domestically and abroad, you have to squeeze Putin's inner circle. And that means going after those around him and the oligarchs and the rich Russians uh, who support him. And these sanctions certainly don't do that. All right. Dana Lewis, live for us from London. Thank you very much. I do appreciate the analysis.